Now, if you were to ask me, what are the most three controversial topics or hot takes in the last five years in the hunting community, on YouTube, on the internet? Uh, well, let's go through them. Number one, this one, the last few years is really taken off. It's using match bullets for hunting. Now, both sides have their arguments. Both sides have some valid points. Personally, I'm on the you should use hunting bullet side. The hot topic number two, which honestly it's been debated for probably over a hundred years. This one's been the longest one that's been debated. What cartridges are ethical for big game? So on the right, a 6.5 Creedmoor or a 300 Winchester Magnum. Now, I'm sure you can guess based off of my YouTube name where I kind of lean towards. But again, it's not so black and white, especially with cartridges when bullet placement and bullet construction are probably the most important. But again, valid points on both sides. Now, hot topic number three, and this is where the meat of this video is going to be, what we're going to discuss. And honestly, I had no idea this was going to be a hot topic until I started experimenting with it. That is fast twist barrels, and do you really need them? Over the last year, I've done quite a bit of experimenting with slower twist barrels in high BC bullets. And in this video, I want to report what I've found and also look at what the experts say as well. Up until about 15 months ago or so, I, like many of you, just assumed that in order to shoot these higher BC bullets, you would need a faster twist. So you would not be able to do it with a 1 and 9. You would have to get a 1 and 8 to shoot these sleek bullets. And then November of 2022, I saw a video from Frontline Rejects who loaded this specific 270, 165 grain Acubon long range in his 1 in 10 twist 270 Winchester short magnum. I was astonished. He took his hand loads all the way out to 500 yards with a lot of success. And he briefly even mentioned in his video that the bullet was quite accurate in his rifle. I made a comment asking what twist it was and he said 1 in 10. And so I contacted him by email and eventually I got him onto my podcast and we talked about how this was possible that his 1 in 10 twist 270 WSM was stabilizing the 165 grain Acubon long range. I asked him a few questions. First off, how was the accuracy? And he said it was quite good. He says on average when he does the, his videos, it takes a certain amount of bullets to, to find something that his gun likes and all of that. And he said it was extremely quick and easy to load the Acubon long range in his 1 in 10 twist 270 WSM. My next question was, what elevation are you at? Because from my understanding, you know, uh, you can stabilize a high BC bullet with a slower twist rate due to elevation. And he told me he was below 2,000 feet. Five months later, I did a video that, uh, well... Let's just say I kind of trolled some 270 Winchester fans. And, well, when you troll the 270 Winchester fans, they will make sure to tell you how wrong you are and that the 270 is the greatest cartridge ever made, which I still don't think it is the greatest cartridge ever made. I'll be honest, I felt a little bad about trolling them. And so I did something kind of stupid. I went and bought the 165 grain Acubon long range and loaded it up in my 270. I knew it worked for frontline rejects and I'm way higher elevation than he is. And I thought, you know what, let's give it a try. It could be an absolute waste of money and these bullets are not cheap, but I decided to give it a try. I first started with Reloader 22 and let me show you the results. This was the best group that I could get with Reloader 22. Uh, my gun just didn't seem to like the combination of Reloader 22 and this bullet. However, I was getting really good velocities. I was getting well over 2,800 feet per second. And all things considered for a cartridge and a rifle that's not even supposed to stabilize this bullet, yeah, sub-MOA is not too bad. 
I then decided to sacrifice a little bit of velocity for better accuracy. I decided to load it with Hodgson 4831SC. And 53 and a half grains gave me under half MOA, which is crazy. It's not even supposed to stabilize this bullet and I'm getting really good groups. I also loaded it just to get a little bit faster and the accuracy is a little bit worse, but still pretty darn good. During that time, I decided to make a video called 270 Winchester Game Changing News. It wasn't just about how I could stabilize this bullet in a one in 10 twist. We also talked about how Browning and Winchester are gonna be making fast twist 270 Winchesters with one in eight, one in seven and a half twists, which will really put this cartridge into the 21st century. What happened next really surprised me. Not only did this video do really well, in fact, it's my third most watched video still and still gets a lot of views. I got a lot of pushback and a lot of hate about my one in 10 twist 270 shooting these high BC bullets that it really well, it's fool's gold that the 100 yard results just aren't telling the whole story. And so shortly after that, I decided to take my 270 Winchester with this bullet out to 800 yards to see if the critics were correct. Just wanted to show you my 270 Winchester. This is about as cheap as you can go. This is a Savage Axis. I have improved the trigger and it's a Lucid Optic scope on it. Okay, 270 at the small target. Thank you. Pack driver. You want to try it? Here. Got it. Wow, the 270 did so well. I got to say, off the top of my memory, uh, the cartridge slash rifle that did the best was this truly, the 270 Winchester. After taking it to 800 yards, I really wanted to see what kind of limitations you had with a 1 in 10 twist. So I decided to send the rest of the box of these bullets to Hopeful Ballistics, who is a lot closer to sea level than me. I believe his elevation is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,400 feet where he's at. And he tried them out in his 270 Winchester Short Magnum. And lo and behold, they grouped just fine. He was getting velocities uh, mid-2800 up to 2950. He could get it over 3000 feet per second, but the accuracy wasn't there. A few months after that, I did something really stupid. I decided to buy these 135 grain long-range hybrid target bullets for 25 caliber. And the cartridge of choice was the 257 Weatherby with a 1 in 10 twist. I knew this one was going to be a lot harder to stabilize than the 165 and 270 because Nosler recommends a 1 in 9 twist for the 165. Burger, well they say 1 in 8. However, I was able <laughs> to get a 0.9 inch group and if the holes look weird it's because it was raining really hard that day so it just looks weird. Incredibly, at 5,100 feet, which is my elevation, I was able to get these to shoot okay at a pretty good velocity of 3,150 feet per second. So the question you might ask, and the question I always thought, how is this possible? How, I'm, how am I getting my slow twist rifles to shoot these long high BC bullets and to have them stable and for them to shoot well all the way out to 800 yards? The number one answer I believe it is elevation. I would say anyone that lives in Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, well, I think you're going to be able to get slow twist rifles to shoot high BC bullets as long as you are at a decent elevation. Now let's face it guys, I'm no expert on this. I'm no ballistician that works for Hornady or Nosler or any of the other big companies. I just decided to be stupid enough to give it a try, maybe waste some money, and got lucky that it worked. You don't need to take my word for it. 
Let's see what the experts have to say. First, let's just start with the big red marketing machine that is Hornady. We're going to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. The company that has really started the rage for fast twists, barrels, and cartridges like the PRCs that take advantage of that. But what does Hornady say about slower twists shooting high BC bullets? The last paragraph, standard twist rate for the 28 nozzler is a 1 in 9. A faster twist may be required to stabilize the heavy 7mm projectiles, but it is affected by elevation and temperature. The 175 ELDX requires a 1 in 8.5 twist to stabilize, whereas the 180 grain ELDM and the 190 grain tip requires a 1 in 8. Remember, what stabilizes at 5,000 feet on a warm day may not stabilize at sea level on a cold day. So not only does Hornady say it can work with high elevation and warmer temperatures, but I also had the chance to talk with Luke from Weatherby a month ago. And we had a fun little conversation. I told him, of course, about how I was shooting 135 grain burgers in my 257 Weatherby. And he did not sound surprised at all. In fact, it sounded like that they've tested that a lot, that they've had great results with higher BC bullets in all of their older slow twist cartridges and rifles. It was a little eye-opening for me. I just wanted to show you this website that's extremely helpful, that kind of gives you an idea of what your stability is gonna look like. Now you could put in other bullets with uh, manual data. Uh, what's nice is if you're shooting a burger bullet, they just have a list right here of all most of their bullets so for example like my friend that's shooting this 170 grain elite hunter and his 270 winchester so you just put that in then you put in the velocity the barrel twist temperature altitude and then you can hit calculate calculate stability and just like my 257 weatherby this is definitely marginally stable but it's on the higher end, definitely a little better than my 257. So a stability of 1.34, which Berger says you may shoot good groups under these conditions, but the BC of the bullet is not optimized. And for this condition, you've lost 5% of your BC. I really want to highlight 7 millimeter right now. Right now it's the real craze with the 7 millimeter PRC. And it is a, a pretty darn good cartridge. But I'm starting to question why it was made. Now let me explain. Let's take the 180 grain VLD in 7 millimeter. We're going to give it pretty uh, pedestrian velocity, 2,850 feet per second. A 7 millimeter REM mag could easily get that. And we'll give it a 9 twist. Most seven rem mags come with a nine twist. And instead of putting it at high, high altitude, we're doing it right at sea level. Whoa. Well, that's interesting. It kind of makes you think, why do we even need the seven PRC? If you are a hand loader with a one and nine twist, seven rem mag, and if you really want to shoot high BC bullets, do it. One last little example, I just wanted to use a 190 grain long range hybrid. We're still going to use a 1 and 9 twist in a 7 rem mag velocities, 2800 feet per second. And let's just say you are at higher altitude. Let's say 8000 feet. Look at the stability. It's extremely stable. Kind of makes you think, why aren't manufacturers providing high BC bullets and factory ammo for the 7 millimeter REM mag. If a lot of them are 1 and 9 twists, and they will stabilize at least a 180 grain at sea level, interesting. To wrap this up, for you folks that are up in the mountains at higher elevations that reload, go to town, man. Take your slow twist rifle with your FUD cartridge and enjoy the benefits of a high BC bullet, if that's what you're into. Now, I, I'm not trying to put the 7 PRC down or any of the other new cartridges. I think they all have their place. I just think it's important to 
know that, well, there's nothing new under the sun.